one of the things the Lord said to us, the Lord said, you know, there are many people that are doing what you're doing all over the world. But the Lord said, there's a difference. The difference is that I told you to do it. Amen. Praise God. He said, that's the difference. The difference is that I told you to do it. Praise God. So I'm going to take a moment to explain why we're here, what we're trying to accomplish, so we can all be on the same page. Amen? 21 million pastors project. So the first thing is, who is African Pastors Premier Educational Network? In a synopsis, we are not a political organization. It's important that we make this statement because some of the things that some of the speakers will be sharing may sound like we have a political posture, but we don't. Praise God. Then the next is, we're not an organization that criticizes or condemns any group or anyone. It is not our job. Our job is to share the word of God. Amen. The next is, we're just an organization with a mandate from God. God told us to do what we're doing. We're not doing it because we're wise enough. We're not doing it because we're intelligent. We're doing it because God has said so. Praise God. Next slide, please. Train One Million Pastors Project. So, what is this conference about? You know, sometimes you can, it's like coming to church. And when you come to church, if someone tells me, I went to church, I say, great. But what was the title? What was the sermon? What was the topic? They say, well, I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. But we want to avoid that. Amen? So, what is this conference about? APN Train One Million Pastors Conference is about telling people, sharing what the Bible has to say about current hot topics in the world that are facing pastors and Christians today. That's what this conference is about. In this conference, we are going to be addressing current hot topics around the world and telling pastors, telling leaders, telling Christians what the Bible has to say about them. Praise God. Next slide, please. What the Bible says about nations. Why nations stray from God. In this conference, you're going to be hearing a speaker tell you what the Bible says about why nations stray from God. Sometimes we, we wonder why is this country or that country not worshiping God. You will hear it, but you're not going to hear a human being's logic. You're going to hear it through the scriptures. Praise God. So here's another thing you're going to hear. You're going to hear an understanding, get an understanding regarding Christianity and Islam. Praise God. You're going to find out. Is Christianity and Islam the same thing? We're not judging any group, but we are Commission to tell you what the Bible says. Next slide, please. We're going to hear what the Bible says about Christianity and gender identity. We believe that anybody can choose any type of lifestyle they want to. That's their thing. We are not here to condemn anyone. But we're here to tell you what the Bible says about it. Praise God. You're going to hear in this conference... The sanctity of life in a mother's womb. Some people say a fetus is not a human being. Well, that's the opinion. But you and I have no opinion. We are here to hear what the Bible says about it. Somebody say, tell me what the Bible says. Amen. Let's go to the next slide, please. We're here to address what the Bible says about Christianity and one world religion. Why can't Christianity just be put in a pot with every other religion and everybody just go their merry way? The issue is, it's not our opinion. We don't have an opinion. We want to go to the Bible to find out what the Bible says about it. Somebody bless the Lord. The next thing we're going to hear is about Christianity and counseling. 
Praise God. Well, is pastor automatically a counselor? Well, I don't have an opinion. Let's pull the Bible. What does the Bible say about the matter? Praise God. Next slide. In this Train One Million Pastors Project, we're going to look at what the Bible says about God's meaning of a pastor and his expectations from every Christian pastor. We're going to look at it. Are you sure that you're supposed to be a pastor? We're going to find out what the Bible says about it. Praise God. Then we're also going to look at something that's going to shock some of us. What the Bible says about God and politics. Should God be involved in politics? Or should God be put in a closet and also only be involved with us on Sundays? Is it your opinion or my opinion? Can you help me out? Someone say, I don't need to hear your opinion, please. I want to hear what the Bible says about the matter. Praise God. Next slide. So in this conference, our predominant theme is sound and unsound. Praise God. Please, can the people in the front say sound? Can the people at the back say unsound? Can we say that again? Sound. Some people in the back say unsound. We'll explain what it means. Next slide, please. In First Corinthians chapter two, from verse one, verse from uh, First Corinthians chapter two, from verse one to five. When we read that, you see that the epicenter of what the apostle Paul was talking about is this: is really saying the gospel is not about your logic. It's not about your intellect. It's not about your degrees. Because Paul was at Mars Hill speaking, po speaking poetry, speaking Greek, speaking all kinds of big languages. And the power of the gospel didn't work until he went back to Jesus Christ. So that's one of the things we're addressing. It's not my opinion. Pastor, I respect you. But I don't want to hear what you think. I want to hear what the Bible is saying. Praise God. Amen. Next slide, please. So, Train One Million Pastors Project is a mandate to train pastors. We began this in Africa with Dr. Walker, Apostle Tuff, some of the people, Dr. King. We were there and we, to, to the glory of God, we've trained thousands of African pastors. And Apostle Bambola and uh, Dr. Smoke came on. You know, we've, the Lord has really been training thousands of pastors. But everywhere we go and we talk to pastors. In fact, I have an email from uh, a lieutenant general of, in, uh, uh, within this country. I just read this email this morning. He said, I was in your conference and I think you need to train pastors in America. He said, I think this should not only be Africa. This ought to be all over the world. Somebody bless the Lord. So part of the vision, so we took it to prayer. And the Lord is saying, I want you to do this from city to city, from state to state in the United States. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants us to do this from nations to nations all over the world in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. A little later, I'll be talking about the websites that we have, the apps we have available. So pastors can be trained with their phone. These teachings, these lectures are being recorded. And pastors are going to have opportunity to listen to them free of charge. Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. But now, when we say sound doctrine, for example, Apostle Bambola is over more than 8 million Christians in Lagos State. And when we're talking about sound doctrine, there are different denominations. And each denomination says, I have my own doctrine. The Anglican says, I have my own doctrine. The Baptists say, I have my own doctrine. The Catholic says, I have my own doctrine. The Presbyterian says, I have my own doctrine. 
The Pentecostal says we have our own doctrine. The full gospel says we have our own doctrine. So the question is, what is sound doctrine? Somebody bless the Lord. In a nutshell, praise God. Please, can I have that file back there? So in a nutshell, sound doctrine is simply preaching what God said in the Bible and living it by grace. Sound doctrine means that when a preacher stands up to preach, he better open the Bible to tell us where he got it. And if it's not from the Bible, we respect him, but tell him to hand back the microphone. Somebody bless the Lord. So I have with me what we will recite together, a summation of what sound doctrine means. There is sound doctrine means that there is only one God. Amen. Isaiah 43 10. Sound doctrine means that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. That God is a Trinity. Amen. Sound doctrine means that there are no gods before or after God. Amen. Sound doctrine means that God knows all things. First John 3 20. Amen. Sound doctrine means that God is all powerful. The difference between our God and the God of witches or the God of the voodoo doctors is that they can carry their idols, but our God carries us. Hallelujah. Sound doctrine means that God is everywhere. Sound doctrine means that God is sovereign. Sound doctrine means that God is a spirit. Hallelujah. Sound doctrine means that God created all things that exist. Things didn't just evolve in a cosmic soup. Thank God I didn't come from some soup. Amen. Sound doctrine means that the spirit does not have a body of flesh and bones. Sound doctrine means that God has always been God. Sound doctrine means that Jesus Christ is God. Sound doctrine means that Jesus became a man. Sound doctrine means that Jesus has two natures, divine and human. Sound doctrine means that Jesus was sinless. Sound doctrine means that Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Sound doctrine means that the Holy Spirit is God. Sound doctrine means that the Holy Spirit is not a force. He's alive. Sound doctrine means that the Bible is inspired by God. There's no one single error in the Bible. Hallelujah. Sound doctrine means that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sound doctrine means that man did not evolve. We were all created by God. Sound doctrine means that a baby in the womb is a human being. Praise God. Sound doctrine means that Adam and Eve were real people. Sound doctrine means that death entered the world because of Adam's sins. Sound doctrine means that sin separates us from God. Sound doctrine means that Jesus died for all our sins. Sound doctrine means that Jesus Christ was a substitution for us. Sound doctrine means that Jesus rose from the dead in his physical body. Sound doctrine means that those who reject Jesus will go to hell. Sound doctrine, hallelujah, somebody bless the Lord, means that hell is a place of fiery punishment. It's not a figure of speech. It's not a metaphor. It is a real place. Sound doctrine means that hell is eternal. Hallelujah. Sound doctrine means that unsaved will go to hell forever. Sound doctrine means that salvation is a free gift of God. Sound doctrine means the Bible is the word of God. Sound doctrine means that a marriage is between a born male and a born female. Sound doctrine means that Jesus will return visibly to the earth. Sound doctrine means that Christians will be raised from the dead when Jesus returns. 
Sound doctrine means that there will be a rapture of the church. Sound doctrine means that there will be final judgment. Sound doctrine means that the damned will be thrown into a lake of fire. Sound doctrine means that Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. Sound doctrine means that there will be new heavens and a new earth. Praise God. Next slide. Hallelujah. You've heard a synopsis of this. But what is the proper response? What is the proper biblical response? When you hear from all the speakers, from their years of experience, and anointing and grace by God upon them. Here's something God is telling you and I. He's telling us in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12. You're not hearing this so you can brag that you are a sound doctrine preacher. You're not hearing it so you can think you're standing. He said, if you think you're standing, be careful lest you fall. We hear it and receive it with humility. Praise God. And when we see that others are doing wrong, we correct them in the spirit of love. Praise God. What is the conference outcome? Next slide. We have to understand that underneath everything that we're going to hear today is this. That Christianity, please would you join me in making this statement. Christianity is a covenant relationship. Not, not a convenient relationship. Praise God. Amen. One more slide. Hallelujah. What is our outcome? Why are we here? Watch this. We're here because God is going to hold us responsible for every message we preach. You know, it is only someone who's still a baby Christian who wants to be given a microphone? People who don't know rush for microphone. But you don't know that anything you say in the microphone, you have to answer for. If you have to answer for the words you speak on a regular basis, based on Matthew chapter 12, imagine what happens when you stand saying that God told you to say something, and if he didn't say it. Oh, somebody think now. God is going to hold you responsible for every message you preach. He's also going to hold you responsible. Watch this. In sound doctrine, we talk on sound doctrine is a two-legged stool. It's, you take a posture that on the left is orthodoxy, but on the right is orthopraxy. So you can have the doctrine, but if you're not living it, you're piling judgment upon yourself. The difference between Jesus Christ and other religious leaders is that Jesus Christ will force you to take sides. Jesus Christ will force you to make a decision. And the Lord is saying, you're in ministry, you're preaching, but I'm pulling you by the ear. Stop all of us. Stop preaching what you think. And go to what the Bible says. For this is sound doctrine. Praise God. 